Hi everyone! Today we're making keto crisps. So it's crisps in the UK and probably potato chips for the rest of the world. But we're talking about the same thing. We're talking about these crispy potato thins that we all love. So many, many of you have been making my keto french fries, which makes me very, very happy. And I've seen the recipe being turned into all sorts of things really, really creative things. So I've seen the dough being turned into doughnuts, for instance, and those are pizza base and some sort of wraps. And I think one lady turned into cinnamon buns, which impressed me no end. But the most stunning one was a gentleman actually turned it into roast potatoes. And he said it was really enjoyable. He really liked it. So I've been seeing these things popping up daily for the last couple of months. So I'm totally impressed and totally inspired. But the ones I see most frequently is to turn the dough into some sort of crackers, tortilla chips, for instance. And it makes perfect sense because the dough is really crispy when you fry it. And it's perfect to be used as a base for crackers. But today we're going to go one step further. We're going to bring the crackers hopefully closer to the texture of potato chips. And I think the key is the thickness. Making the tortilla chips and the crackers can be slightly labor intensive because you have to roll out the dough pretty thin and then you have to cut them up. And also it's very hard to get it very thin. So today I'm going to show you a method that you can create these crackers really quickly and easily. And also because we can get them very thin. So hopefully when we fry them, we can bring the texture closer to potato chips. So whether they taste like potato chips is for you to decide. But whichever way, they're crispy, they're delicious, and extremely fun to eat. So let me show you how to make it. So most of you are probably quite familiar with this process. We're going to create the same dough as the french fries. The only difference is I'm going to blend the flour. So I've got 150 grams of ground almonds. That's my almond flour. And then I've got 25 grams of coconut flour. And in the flour, we're going to add in our zenangan. So this is about five to six teaspoons. So it goes in. So the quantity we're making is doubling the French fry recipe. And the reason being is I think it will make the dough easier to handle. And I'll show you why that is later. So you can use single flour, either one, or I know some people use lupin. And uh, you can also blend half and half if you want to. But my mix today is actually one to three, if that makes sense. So it's three quarters of ground almonds and one quarter of coconut flour. So I think this ratio is the best for these chips we're making today, for my taste. But you can experiment and create a different mix. Just try it out and uh, you will find the best texture you like. And then we're going to add in our hot liquid. I'm going to add in about 12 tablespoon-ish. Let's see how it goes. I know you can convert the liquid into a cup. I just prefer doing with tablespoons. It gives me much better control of the consistency of the dough. Okay, so the dough is ready, easy peasy. So that's one batch. And what I've done is I actually created another batch earlier on. This batch, I'm going to keep it plain for our plain chips. And this one, I'm going to turn it into tortilla chips. With tortilla chips, you can obviously keep it plain, but I like to add a couple of ingredients. So I'm going to add in some black sesame. So I'm going to add in about one tablespoon. It should do nicely. The color is very dramatic. And then I'm going to add in some salt as well to season. Just a couple of pinches of salt and uh, just mix the whole thing together. So it depends on what flour you've been using for your fries. But you can see as you blend the flour, it creates different texture. The texture of the dough also changes as well. So this one is more so the moji like uh, It's not too sticky. Okay, so this is my tortilla chips dough. Okay, now I've got a chopping board here. And then I'm going to place a layer of baking sheet on top. And now I'm going to take my plain dough and uh, kind of just squeeze out any air pocket. So we don't want any sort of big gaps in there. And then kind of roughly shape it into a loaf, something like this. So the size of your loaf is determined by your food processor. What I've got here 
is the feeder. Sorry, my hands all sticky. So this is the feeder part of my food processor. So you can feed your vegetables, cucumber, whatever it is. So my food processor happens to have a pretty generous size of feeder. So I can make larger chips. So roll it to the size that can roughly fit through the feeder of your food processor. Imagine you're creating a very long potato, okay? So we want to shape it in a kind of loaf shape freeze it and then we're going to feed it through and use the food processor to slice our chips. So you can see what my cunning plan is. So we're going to use the baking sheet to help us to do that. So I normally just kind of squeeze it and shape it as I go. You can use a cloth if you want to and then just gradually lengthen it and kind of roll it into the shape you want. And you can always test it by putting it through the feeder, see if it goes through. <laughs> okay, this is really as simple as that. So this size is perfect. And what I'm going to do now is just tighten up the size like a Christmas cracker and do it this side as well. Just keep it in shape. And uh, we're going to freeze it like this. And here's our tortilla dough. I mean, the whole recipe is fun. But I think this is really fun because I'm going to shape it into a triangular shape, if that makes sense. Okay, let me show you. So I'm going to just place it down and do the same. So I'm going to create a lens first. Just make sure that it's kind of skinny enough to go through the feeder. So now what I'm going to do is lift the baking sheet and press from both sides and press toward the middle, just the top part like this and hopefully when you open it it looks like this look at that so much fun <laughs> i really shouldn't be having so much fun let me just lift it up to show you so when you pull it through the food processor it will create this triangular tortilla chips for you and now i'm going to wrap it up and put it in the freezer as well like a little present Okay, so this is going to the freezer as well. So now we're going to place the dough in the freezer. I say for a minimum five, six hours. So normally I just leave it to freeze overnight and uh, it's ready for me the next day. So when you take the dough out of the freezer, the chances are it's too hard to go through the food processor. And all you have to do is leave it on the kitchen counter for about 10 minutes and it should be ready. So you don't want the dough to become soft because it would be difficult to slice it through. So I think 10 to 15 minutes should be plenty. Okay, so I have two batches that I made last night and they were frozen overnight. And uh, let's have a look. So this is the plain one. And this is our tortilla chips. So I'm going to leave them on the kitchen counter for about 10, 15 minutes. My dough has been resting for about 15 minutes and it should be okay to go through. So it's the top of my food processor. Here's the feeder. And I'm gonna just pop it through like I would with a cucumber. So that goes in nicely. And I'm going to use this. This is actually the bits that you push through your veggies and I'm going to use it to push it down. Okay, so let's do it. So that was a dramatic moment. Can you see this? That's our chips. And by the way, I forgot to mention, use the thinnest slicer you have for your food processor. With my machine, it comes in two thickness. This is the thinner one. So use the thinnest you've got for your machine. So look at these, these are your chips. Really thin as well. Now I'm going to pop them in a container and uh, pop them back in the freezer till I'm ready to fry them. And now we're going to do the same with our tortilla dough. And look at that, that's our tortilla chips. Nice and triangular, done in seconds. And same thing, I'm going to pop them back into the freezer until we're ready to cook them. So I'm going to show you how you can fry these chips and also bake them. So with the tortilla chips, I'm going to bake them because baking made them taste more crackers-like. And with the plain chips, I'm going to fry them the same way you fry potato chips. Okay, to bake the tortilla chips, what I've got here is the baking tray aligned with a layer of baking sheet. And I'm going to grease the baking sheet. Be generous, because it tastes a lot better when there's a certain amount of oil. And take some of this frozen tortilla chips 
they're just so lovely and then just light them up and try to fit in as many as possible okay so they're ready to go into lava so the tortilla chips are going into a 180 to 190 degree preheated oven and I'm going to bake them for about 10 minutes on one side and about 5 to 10 minutes on the other so you need to flip them at least once I tend to do it a couple of times so we're ready to fry our chips and today I'm going to use this pot it's not a deep fryer as in machine but uh, it's a deep fryer pot I only got it last week and uh, I've used it a few times and I quite like it so I thought I'd show it to you so normally I use olive oil but I'm a little bit short of olive oil so I'm using avocado oil this is a nice pot because I don't reuse my oil so I always try to get away with minimum amount of oil for deep frying so you probably need a little bit more oil than frying your french fries so if you're doing the, the shallow fry like I do with the chips you need a little bit more depth so the chips will float to the top but still you can see that's really not huge amount of oil so what makes this part of deep fryer is actually the lid so it comes with a lid like this with a kind of inner lid so what you do is there's a little opening you kind of slot in this bit and it goes in to secure it so it doesn't come off and then you can open the inner lid and as you can see there is a kind of a, a draining oil draining rack here that you could use and because the lid actually prevents kind of oil splashing so it's been working really well and it also comes with a thermometer um, it comes separately so you can still wash the pot in a dishwasher it's got a metal stick at the bottom making contact with the oil and you just slot it in here and it tells you what temperature your oil is I always judge with the level of sizzling but it's quite nice to be able to see the number as well and then here's our frozen chips just take out the amount you want and leave the rest in the freezer so they don't become too soft the thermometer is approaching kind of 120 ish so I think this is the point I would like to start to drop in my chips I'm going to just put one in to see what happens it should start to sizzle immediately so just pop in one by one and adjust the heat as you go you don't want the oil to be too hot so again my trusty chopsticks you are allowed to use a pair of tongs <laughs> it's not mandatory okay so you can see they start to pop up almost immediately so you don't want to flip them until they're kind of crisp up a little bit because otherwise you're going to break it because they're so thin I say the sweet spot is about 120 to 140 so they have sufficient time to fry they're not sort of brown immediately at least from my experience and look at how thin they are it's just so wonderful okay so once they look kind of golden brown they're probably ready to come out put them on my kitchen towel to drain so that looks ready too oh look at them golden brown and beautiful so thin and crispy there you go so there you go this is our first batch how beautiful are they can you hear that crispy and just leave them to cool and then they will crisp up even more and I'll fry a few more so we have a nice little batch there and my plain chips look at them they look really gorgeous you can just season them with some salt Himalayan salt or modern salt they're just wonderful to eat but I'm really addicted to my chili chips at the moment so what I've got here is some cayenne pepper and some smoked paprika they make wonderful wonderful chili chips so with cayenne pepper I'm gonna just add in maybe half a teaspoon it's really up to you to sprinkle on top and then my smoked paprika and just give a little sprinkle as well cayenne pepper is not really hot it's got a kick to it and I'm gonna add a little bit of salt as well and I'm going to give them a quick mix look at them and also I've got my tortilla chips here as well look at them nice and golden brown and so crispy so there you go here's our keto chips super thin and light so I'm going to go for my chili chips first I've been so addicted to them look at this so thin mmm oh the kick mmm love it it's got a bit of a kick but not super hard and this will go really well with a glass of wine great combination and then 
of tortilla chips. It looks so adorable. Perfect. So good. And the sesame is just so aromatic. Mmm. I'll be very happy just to eat them like this with nothing else. But of course, if you have dipping sauce, it will take them to another level. Any salsa, you know, avocado, mayo, they'll be just amazing. So I bake the tortilla chips because I think they come out more cracker-like and I fry the chili chips in oil. But of course you can bake or fry either of them. Um, it just matters of your taste, uh, which one you like. So the key with making these chips is to get them super, super thin. If they're thin, they crisp up really quickly. So the great thing about the method is obviously you can slice them super thin, but also super fast. And instantly you have frozen chips waiting for you in the freezer. So you can make a larger batch and freeze them just like you do with your keto fries. And uh, they're ready for you anytime. You can play with the flavors, you can add herbs, spices, and the possibility is endless. So I started filming this morning when it was pitch black outside and now you can see it's uh, a lot brighter. So uh, it's taken a little while. So I hope you like today's recipe and we'll give it a go. These chips are just so amazing. So follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. I post the food I eat and those are recipes from this channel. And also you can find a link down below to my Amazon shop if you ever wonder about the products I use. So thanks for hanging out with me today and thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.